Section 27 of Journal of the Reverend Francis S. Berry, Volume 2. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Brian Keenan. Friday 17. I observed as a day of rigid fasting. This I cannot do more than once a month. I am frequently obliged to go on three cups of tea with a little bread for eight or nine hours, and to ride many miles, and preach, and perform my other ministerial labors. Sunday 19. We had a crowded congregation, and a moving season at the sacrament. Monday and Tuesday we directed our course up John's River. Wednesday 22. Crossed the ridge and kept on to the westward. We went Major J. White's path, and found it abundantly better than the old one. We reached the top of the ridge in about six miles. Here we found ourselves among fruitful hills, then we had a good path for six miles more, except where there were some laurel branches and roots. We stopped at S's, and it was well we did, or we should have been well-nigh starved, both man and horse. I went on to D's, and thence to Nelson's, where I met with brothers B, A, and W, ancient men among us. I stood the fatigue, and sleeping three in a bed, better than I expected. From White's to Nelson's is eighty miles. We crossed the Wataba about twenty times. At supper we ate of the perch that are taken in great plenty from Smith's Fish Spring. I judge there must be a subterraneous communication from that to the river. I felt uncomfortable in my mind, as I feared the Lord had left this place. I was led to speak with life and power on, Will ye also go away? I spent a night with Brother Whittaker. I wish his wife may not love him to death. Tennessee, Monday, 27. We hasted to F. Ernest's on Nolachucky River, where we hold our Western Conference. Here six brethren from Kentucky met us, and we opened our conference with twenty-three preachers, fifteen of whom were members. We received every man's account of himself and his late labors, and inquired of each man's character among his brethren. Our business was conducted with great love and harmony. Our brethren have built a meeting-house, and I must needs preach the first sermon, which I did on Exodus twenty twenty four. Notwithstanding it was a time of great scarcity, we were well and most kindly entertained. Friday, May 1 We rode thirty miles to Holstein, without food for man or horse. But when we came to Brother Baker's, we had food and friendship. My feelings were disagreeable. In addition to the heat of the weather and the fatigue I have gone through, I have not slept five hours a night, one night with another, for five nights past. Saturday 2 On our way we called to see Father A, where we fed and prayed, and in the evening reached Abingdon, being the time and place of the sitting of the district court. Virginia, Sunday 3 I gave them a sermon, and although it was so public a time, we had great decency in the congregation. Rode thirteen miles in the evening. Monday 4. We rode thirty-five miles to the head branches of the main Holstein, and the next day reached Alfred's on New River. Wednesday 6. We rode to Pepier's Ferry, and made it thirty-five miles to M. Daniel's. Thursday we rode to Brother W.'s, near Fincastle, thirty-eight miles. The toils of this journey have been great, the weather sultry, the rides long, and roads rough. We suffered from irregularity in food and lodging. Although the people are very kind, and give us the best they have, and that without fee or reward, so that I have only spent about two shillings in riding about two hundred miles. I hope posterity will be bettered by my feeble efforts. I have ridden two hundred and twenty miles in seven days and a half, and am so exceedingly outdone and oppressed with pain, weariness, and want of sleep, that I have hardly courage to do anything. Hail, happy day of rest! It draws nigh, and this labor and toil will soon be at an end. Saturday night. I conferred with the traveling and local preachers at E. Mitchell's. 
Sunday ten, the preachers and people were solemn, whilst I enforced, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. Monday eleven. I rode forty miles to Mr. Blaker's at the calf pasture, and the next day thirty-five to Moore's. Wednesday thirteen, rode twenty-four miles to Rocktown, and preached at three o'clock, and again the next day. Here I met the trustees of our school, to whom I read my thoughts on education. In the evening I left the town, and on Friday 15 rode 40 miles. Saturday 16. I had a hard push to Newtown Quarterly Meeting, where, after delivering a short discourse, I held a conference with the local preachers and leaders. I enjoyed myself among these people. They are not quite as lively as heretofore, but God is still with them. Sabbath day, after sacrament, love feast, and ordination, I preached with some freedom on Second Peter three seventeen eighteen. Upon the whole, my soul is refreshed, although I have been on the run, and have written none in my journal for more than a week. Monday 18 We rode to Charlestown, Jefferson County, and lodged with a pious physician. Next morning breakfasted with J. H., and then came to Harper's Ferry, where the impending rocks impress the mind of the traveller with terror, and should they fall, would crush him to pieces. This scene is truly awful and romantic. We came to S. Phillips, but were not expected until next week, so I directed my course to Baltimore. Maryland, Wednesday 20. I passed Fredericktown, thence to Liberty Town, where I stopped, conversed, and prayed, and then came on to Brother Warfield's, thirty miles. Thursday, 21. We set out for Baltimore. The rain came on very heavily. I have not felt, nor seen such, since the 6th of March, since which time I have ridden about 1,200 miles. This day I heard of the death of one among my best friends in America, Judge White of Kent County, in the state of Delaware. This news was attended with an awful shock to me. I have met with nothing like it in the death of any friend on the continent. Lord, help us all to live out our short day to thy glory. I have lived days, weeks, and months in his house. Oh, that his removal may be sanctified to my good and the good of the family. He was about sixty-five years of age. He was a friend to the poor and oppressed. He had been a professed churchman, and was united to the Methodist connection about seventeen or eighteen years. His house and heart were always open, and he was a faithful friend to liberty in spirit and practice. He was a most indulgent husband, a tender father, and an affectionate friend. He professed perfect love, and great peace, living and dying. Sunday 24 I preached twice in town, and was delivered from my gloomy state of mind. I spent part of the week in visiting from house to house. I feel happy in speaking to all I find, whether parents, children, or servants. I see no other way. The common means will not do. Baxter, Wesley, and our form of discipline say, Go into every house. I would go farther and say, Go into every kitchen and shop. Address all, aged and young on the salvation of their souls. Wednesday 27 I read The Dawn of Universal Peace, and the second and third volumes of Walker's Sermons. Thursday my mind was under deep exercises, unknown to all but God alone. Saturday 30 I met the Africans to consult about building a house and forming a distinct African yet Methodist church. Friday, June 5. I came in peace to Cokesbury, stayed on Saturday, and gave them a sermon on the shortness of time, thence came through dust and heat to northeast. Sunday I preached within the frame of a house that has begun, to a number of sinners. Monday 8. I preached twice, and came in the evening to Mr. Bassett's, on the manor. I have great inward distress in my soul. I felt, when in prayer, 
as if the Lord would restore Sister Moore to health. Time will determine whether the impression is of the Lord. Tuesday night. We hasted on to Georgetown. Some are of opinion that blank will receive two hundred pounds per annum or more, glebe subscriptions, etc. This is more than sixty-four dollars, and even that he seldom received among us. He was always very generous, and did not serve us for money. He did certainly run well. I was low in body and mind, and very flat in preaching. Dear Brother B., who attended me with his carriage to northeast the last time I was here, is now gone to rest. Oh, how short is the life of man! We must needs come on to Chestertown, still languid in body, and my spirits under an awful fit of dejection at reviewing the state of persons and things. I was quite unwell, and crowded with company. My subject in town was Psalm 51, 9 through 13. We then rode fifteen miles home with Brother C., my body and spirit still very low. O oh, my Lord, help me through all my afflictions. Ah, what a comfortable thing it is to be among the ancient Methodists. But this is not always my place. Indeed, it cannot be. Thursday 11. Still under awful depression. I am not conscious of any sin, even in thought, but the imprudence and unfaithfulness of others bear heavily on my heart. I feel a degree of willingness to decline, die, and enter into rest. For the first time I visited Centerville and preached in the new house. Some of the people felt awful. I saw Dr. Hall, who was greatly changed since 1792, and under deep exercise about preaching, so that he cannot attend to his practice, and appears to be lost in thought. I wrote to him to try Baltimore. It is a pity such a man of sentiment, learning, and fine feeling should be lost. I rode home with R. W. He is rich in the world, but wants more of the life of religion. He appears still to love the preachers, and the cause of God. I received information that Dr. M.'s wife, before she died, manumitted her favorite servant-maid. Not long after, the doctor himself was called away, but before his removal he manumitted all his slaves. This man claimed no high gospel light, and professed no more religion than the generality of the world among us do. I have a hope that God is preparing me for greater usefulness in my latter days. Oh, how happy should I be, if, after laboring thirty years, as I sometimes fear, to very little profit, it should hereafter appear that hundreds have been converted by my ministry. Of late I have had but little to do, but pray, preach, ride, converse, and take my necessary refreshment. Saturday 13. We crossed Chop Tank River at Ennell's Ferry. We had nine men, three horses, and a carriage on board, and a very indifferent boat. But through a kind providence we got safe over. When I first landed I felt a damp on my spirits, which I feared was ominous of persons and things. Our friends were loving at the Dorset Quarterly Meeting, but not very lively. However, there was some stir in the love feast. At eleven o'clock we had nearly a thousand people collected, but they are awfully hardened. We had a heavy time. I felt much like what I suppose Jonah felt. We were furnished richly with the comforts of life. I came to the dwelling house of my dear friend Judge White, whose death I have already mentioned. It was like his funeral to me. I learned since I came here, and I think it worthy of observation, that just before he died, unknown to his wife, he had showed Samuel, his son, his books, and given directions concerning his house, etc. He then came to his wife and said, I feel as I never felt before, and gave certain directions concerning his burial. Delaware, Wednesday, 17. I had a solemn season at Dover. I spent the evening with Dr. A. Ridgely in the late dwelling house of his father. In some houses we serve the fathers, not the children, in some the children, not the fathers, and in some we serve both parents and children. 
Thursday 18. I preached at Duck Creek Crossroads, where there has been a great revival of religion. Friday 19. I set out for Philadelphia and came to White Clay and Red Clay Creeks. I saw my old friend S.H. once more. I must needs preach, although I had ridden thirty-five or forty miles. Next day I called at Chester, and found my dear sister Withy unwell and in trouble. Oh, may I meet her in heaven at last! Pennsylvania, Sunday, 21 I preached in the city of Philadelphia three times, not with the success I would wish. I was exceedingly assisted in meeting the classes, in which I spent three days, and am now of opinion that there is more religion among the society than I expected. I trust both they and myself will remember this visit for days to come. I was also much quickened in meeting the local preachers and leaders, who spoke feelingly of the state of their souls and the work of God. I now go hence to meet new troubles, and to labor while feeble life shall last. Thursday 25. I rode to Crossweeks. Friday 26. Although very poorly, I reached Brother B's. I was happy in this family, and addressed most of them concerning their souls. New Jersey, Saturday 27. I came to Elizabethtown, and found Brother Morrill, who had been bled and physicked almost to death, on the recovery. My troubles are greater than ever. My body is weak, and my spirits very low. At the request of my friends, I stayed in town until Sunday, and was assisted in a manner I least expected in preaching to about eighty people from 1 Corinthians 15, 58. After sermon, I called the society together, and had a melting time in speaking personally to each. I attended the Bowery Church in the afternoon, and the minister spoke largely on that your faith might not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. New York, Monday, 29. I came to New York the new way by Newark Bridges, which are well established over Second and Passaic Rivers. It is the nearest way to New York, and preserves the traveler from heat in the summer and cold in the winter, from mosquitoes and delays by winds and other incidents. I began meeting the women's classes, and felt happy, and found the Lord was amongst the sisters. Saturday, July 4. Being the anniversary of independence, the bells ringing, drums beating, guns firing, and orations on liberty, and equality too, are not forgotten. I see the need of being more watchful among the best of men. A spirit of love exists among the preachers but we are far from being as spiritual as we ought to be. The Reverend Mr. Ogden was kind enough to present me with his first volume, On Revealed Religion. It contains a soft yet general answer to the deistical, atheistical oracle of the day, Thomas Paine. It is a most excellent compilation, taken from a great number of ancient and modern writers on the side of truth, and will be new to common readers. So far as I have read, I can recommend it to those who wish for full information on the subject. I met the official members of the Society, and had some close talk on the doctrine and discipline of the Church. I asked if they wished to be Methodists. But how could I suppose anything else, when they had been a society of nearly thirty years standing? Sunday 5 I preached in Brooklyn in the morning, and returned to assist in the sacrament in the afternoon at the new church. I then met the black classes, and preached at half-past six. I closed my day's work by meeting two men's classes. Monday 6. I met nine classes, so that I have now spoken to most of the members here, one by one. I left the city in peace, and received of their bounty towards bearing my expenses. We came to Stamford, where I preached in a private house. Connecticut Rode thirty-three miles to Stratford. The prospects here are great as to the fruits of the earth. My body was weak, and my faith still more so. However, I gave them a sermon on John three nineteen through 21 
and the house was crowded inside and out. Friday 10. We had a very warm ride, fourteen miles, to New Haven. I think it as sultry here as it was the 10th of June in Delaware. Nothing would do but I must preach in Dr. Edwards's meeting-house, which I did, on these words, Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss, for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ my Lord. Saturday 11. I came to Middletown. We had a prayer meeting, and I spent some time in visiting from house to house. Sunday 12. Brother Roberts being indisposed, I had to give them two sermons at the farms, and one at the courthouse. Monday 13. We had some life at Middle Haddam. Tuesday 14 preached at New London about six o'clock, where I found most of the preachers present. Wednesday 15 we opened our conference, which consisted of about twenty members, and sat until noon on Saturday. We had great peace in our conference, but some exercises relative to the externals arose from the ancient contest about baptism, these people being originally connected with those that are of that line. Oh, what wisdom, meekness, patience, and prudence are necessary. Our brethren were exceedingly kind, and I hope this conference will be for the good of the people in this place, and thousands besides. Monday 20. We took our leave of town, and set off for our respective appointments. Two of our British brethren from the West Indies, Harper and Kingston, who had fled here to save their lives, that is, if possible, to recover their health, were with us. I was pleased to see our preachers ready to give their strained brethren a little of the little they had. I came to Norwich, fifteen miles, and preached at eight o'clock a.m. in the academy, formerly the separate meeting-house. It was a most awful time of heat. Rhode Island, Tuesday, 21. We rode twelve miles to Plainfield, and after resting and feeding we came to Coventry, in Providence. My fatigue and indisposition made me glad to get to bed. The people here have made some attempts to improve the state of the roads, and really they need it, for they are properly made up of rocks and stones. Wednesday 22. At Brother L's I ordained D.M.C. from Passamaquoddy, who is as one born out of due time. He has been laboring between the British and American boundaries. I consider it fifty hard miles from New London to General Lippelt's. We have been the best of three days riding it, through the intense heat, and last year I rode it in one day. I feel him moving towards these people as though the Lord would get himself a name and have a people to praise him in this place. I feel myself greatly humbled before the Lord, for the peace and union in our late conference, and the satisfaction expressed by the preachers on receiving their stations. Thursday 23 We came in the evening to Providence. When we entered the town, some drunken fellows raised a cry and shout, and made a sacrifice of the Methodists to hell. Mr. Blank is now pastor of, and the tenant house is shot against us. I wished to ride on, and not to stop in town. But Mr. Robertson, an ancient Englishman, constrained us to turn in with him. We dined at Milton, and made it thirty miles to Boston, where I preached twice on the Sabbath, though very unwell, in a room that will hold about two hundred and fifty people. It seemed as if we hardly had either cursing or blessing among the people here. I have no doubt but that if we had a house, we should command a large congregation. But we labor under great inconveniences where we preach at present. I feel myself feeble in body and faint in spirit. Yet Christ is mine, and I hope to be his in time and forever. Amen. Massachusetts, Monday, 27. I rode through some rain to Lynn. I was much shut up and distressed in my public exercises. My congregations were large and lifeless. Since I have been in Lynn, I have visited Wood's End and Graves End, met five classes, visited about one dozen families, and talked to them personally about their souls, 
and prayed with them. I have filled up intervals in reading my Bible, and the second volume of Mr. Wesley's sermons. Oh, how I wish our preachers and people to read his journals, sermons, and notes. My body is afflicted, but my soul is serene. Thursday 30 I preached on Isaiah 55, 10, 11. Friday was an excessively rainy day. My spirits were sunk into dejection. I feel no passion, but grieve and sorrow. To move, move, seems to be my life. I now lament that I did not set off with the young men to the province of Maine. There are some tender, gracious souls in this town, especially among the members of society. End of section 27. Recording by Brian Keenan.